All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 93 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. If you are watching this one on YouTube, I do need to acknowledge the giant brown elephant in the room. I uh, am looking uh, a little bit tan. <laughs> I look... Oh, dude, I'm just looking at myself in the camera now. I, I, I look like fucking Chris Lilly from 2005. Like, I look like I've got blackface on. We did it. I don't. That is definitely not what I'm doing. But fuck, me and Luke for our radio show, we did a thing where, I don't know, we thought it would be funny for me to get a spray tan. And he's just, he's just, he's just fucked it. I look... Look, there's parts of me that look all right. Like, my arm looks... It looks all right. A little bit too dark. It's not that bad. But my face... I think my face is the first thing that he did. And, oh, man. I just... Yeah, it just looks... It just looks weirdly racist at this point. Which which is just not... Well, we were going for orange. And then we just came off as fucking Chris Lilly. Like, oh, man... So that's, I had to address the fucking tan because I know there's going to be a million comments, but uh, yeah, welcome to the tan edition of the uh, Spearhead Sun East podcast. Man, we're getting pretty close to episode 100, guys. Need to figure out what I'm doing for episode 100. This, I actually, I'm, I'll talk about that later in the podcast. I do have an idea of what we should do for episode 100 because it is, you know, it's a big episode. We need to make a big deal out of it. But uh, man, I wanted to talk about the fucking cricket. Oh, the cricket is on the, the some big event. I don't know what it's called. The Ashes or some shit. And, dude, cricket sucks. Any game that goes for five hours sucks. Shitty game. Cricket is the monopoly of sports. Like, people explain the rules to you, and then you're like, oh, yeah, that'll be fun. But then you have to play the, fu- like the whole fucking game. You get an hour into it, and you're like, is this done yet? What's going on? Can we all go home or what? That, yeah, yeah. Cricket is like the fucking monopoly of sport. I never understood how anyone could watch that shit. It's more boring than golf. Like, golf takes a long time and it's kind of a slow sport, but fuck, at least, at least there seems you can follow one dude around and he hits, he hits the ball heaps. Cricket is just a bunch of standing and, and jogging. I don't know. I just don't understand it. And, but everybody here is losing their shit over it. I'm recording this in the studio um, just after our show, and everyone here is losing. Well, you know, it's it's funny. Everybody on on the on the Hit Network, which is the mainstream Fox network, they don't give a fuck about cricket. It's playing on all of the TV screens and and instead of the radio, and no one gives a fuck about it. But I walk down through Triple M, which is like the manly sport level, and I don't know. I think Australia got a fucking goal or a wicket or a catch or whatever the fuck goes on in cricket. I don't know anything about it, and uh, the entire level just erupted into cheers. So that's the difference between the two levels it's actually uncanny that there's you know there's fucking people like that in the same building working for the same place um but anyway enough about radio shit i uh i've been taking the train to work recently um and man i just i can't do it i can't i can't fucking deal with public transport the time has come Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting my fucking driver's license. I'm buying a car next year. I don't care if I have to sell my camera or sell my fucking soul. I'm getting a car next year. Whatever I have to do, I'm going to get the money and I'm going to buy like a piece of shit car. I'm not going to buy a nice car, right? What I could do is, you know, put on a fucking show and then spend all of the money on like a nice... Well, not even a nice car, just not... Like, I'm not at nice car money yet. I'm no... I'm, I only just made it to fucking jeans money, $400 a week, you know, a, a, a while back. But, uh... I, you know what? I think it's time to just get a car and it just save up for it and blow my savings on a car. Because at this point, I feel like a car would actually make me more productive and enable me to make more money because it would just be less time traveling, more time working. Like, it's time to make my life just more fucking efficient, I need to get a car, and yeah, like, like, you know, I could, I could go all out and get a nice car, and by that I mean not, just not a piece of shit, but I just feel like, why would you get, like, because, you know, you could get a new car, a brand new car for 15 grand, and that's, it's kind of a lot of money, but it is, it's also achievable at the same time, like, like, if you have a full-time job earning seven, eight hundred bucks a week, you can save up 
for that car or at least get a car loan to buy that car. But then it, it's like, why would you buy that when you could just spend like eight to 10 grand on a piece of shit and then drive that until you can afford an actually nice car instead of getting yourself in debt to buy like the fucking home brand cars like a <laughs> like a Holden Jazz, one of those fucking girly pieces of shit. I don't know. Well, yeah, so anyway, my, my goal now is to, is to just get a piece of shit car. And oh man, I keep getting distracted by how fucking horribly tan I am. You know, when we, when we, were, <laughs> when we were saying we were going to give me a spray tan, a whole bunch of girls... By the way, thank you ladies for these tips that we blatantly ignored. A whole bunch of girls were like, hey, you can't, um, <laughs> you can't spray tan your legs if you don't shave them. And I thought, nah... Yes, you can. Sure you can. You can totally do that. And uh, we did that, and they were all right. <laughs> because my legs look just fucking horrible. Like, the hair is more tanned than my legs. I've just, it's like I've dyed the hairs around my legs. And, oh, this, this, it's just fuck. And I stink. I smell like shit. Like, I smell like vanilla and... and and I don't even know what the fuck else is in uh, vanilla and chemicals. That's what I, sa- I smell like. It's just fucked. And you know, I'm gonna have to get it. I'm gonna have to get the fucking train home. <laughs> I can't get on a train like this, man. I'm gonna get a king hit. Like, there's no way you could look at me and think, "Oh yeah, that guy's just gone overboard with tan." You'd look at me and be like, "Yeah, he's doing blackface." I'm gonna get fucking king hit. I'm getting an Uber. Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna do. I, there's no way I'm getting on a train looking like this, man. Fuck that. And I'm going to get an Uber to work as well. Ah, oh, fuck. Tomorrow is the work Christmas party. <laughs> How the fuck am I going to network when I look like a racist? Oh. What a, anyway, so what I was saying is I'm sick of the fucking train and public transport. I need my inhaler now. Where the fuck is that? Oh, give me one second. I'll pause. I'll be right back. Oh, there it is. Never mind. Ah, oh, don't even have to pause. All right. So I'm sick of the train. I'm also sick of asthma, but that's just something that I have to live with. Um, so I'm I'm just I'm just adjusting myself on this chair because I've so, I, we thought it would be funny for me to wear really short shorts, and now I, I my legs keep rubbing against the bottom of the chair. It's really uncomfortable. Don't worry though. It's not going to be like the first film podcast. I'm not going to be playing with my dick for an hour. Sorry about that, guys. No, I, I you know why that happened? Like I, I I did my first podcast and I just did it how I normally do, which is you know. It's like a guy sitting alone in your room. Like, don't tell me. All you fucking losers who commented, oh, you can't stop touching your dick. Why do you keep adjusting your cock? It's like, man, I'm a man and I'm wearing skinny jeans. Of course, I'm going to adjust my dick. Like, you never you never see a girl getting yelled at because she kept adru- adjusting her bra st- straps. That never happens. But, you know, I got to move my dick from being crushed by one of my legs. And you guys are like, oh, you can't stop touching his dick. It's like, dude, I'm not Louis. CK, all right? I'm sometimes I'm just trying to readjust myself. It's not for you, okay? And don't tr- don't come here and act all high and mighty saying that you've never fucking touched your dick while you were alone in your bedroom, all right? Because you were uncomfortable, okay? That's how I've been doing this podcast for like almost two years now, screaming alone in my bedroom, looking like a piece of shit where no one can see me readjusting my dick at my whim, okay? So I've brought in the camera. I'm not going to touch my dick this episode. Episode, you're fucking welcome. All right. I keep losing track of what I'm talking about. The train. I'm sick of the train. I can't do it anymore. I can't. You know what? I don't mind public transport. I can't fucking stand peak hour public transport. I've been leaving here deliberately um, late so that I skip like the five to six p.m. fucking rush hour train shit. And I also have been getting here late as well because I refuse to get on the train between 8am and 9am because I can't stand. That's that's what gets me is I can't 
fucking stand on a train like I live in Mumbai, India, where there's no fucking train seats, rubbing shoulders with some stinky 40-year-old dude in a cheap Target business shirt, and then to the left of me is some woman who I, you know, I might elbow her in the tit because the train moves, and then she looks at me like I'm fucking Harvey Weinstein. It's like, dude, it's an accident. It's a packed train. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. My elbows are, are either like fucking... Asian face height or white woman tit height. I can't fucking help it. I can, so I, now I just start rubbing up against the fat cunt in the Target business shirt, hating my life. So what I've started to do now is I just make myself late. Okay? Because I, I, I can't get on a train where I have to stand for the whole ride. Because the only thing that keeps me sane when I'm on the train main, I'm rhyming because with my brain, <laughs> sorry about that, the only thing that keep me, can keep me sane when I'm on the public transport is reading, uh, on the way in today I read a fucking great comic book, I'm reading Justice League, The Dark Side War Part 2, it's fucking awesome, written by Jeff Johns, highly recommend, but I'm reading that shit like a nerd, and <laughs> the only reason I managed to read it is because I got to the train station this morning, and, uh, Oh, well, I'll tell you what really pissed me off at the train station before this, okay? So I get to the train station, and it's pretty empty. I was there, like, I don't know, eight minutes before the train comes. Train comes every ten minutes, so I just missed one train. Peak hour time, okay? So it starts, more and more people start rocking up after me. But I get there, and hardly anyone's there. Um, there and there's a bench, right? And there's one person on the bench. There's one older woman standing next to the bench, and then in the middle of the bench, the person sitting on it has left their bag and their book right in the middle of the fucking bench. Like there was, it's a space enough for three people, but that one cunt on the bench is just sitting there and then spread their shit all over the bench. So I get there and I look at it. And I'm like, fuck you, cunt. I'm sitting on that bench. I don't give a fuck about your book. All right. So I, I move the book and shit over. Like, obviously, like, hey, man, move your shit. So I move it over myself, and I sit down like the fucking alpha male I am, right? I'm like, I, d I dare you to say something, cunt. I'm sitting on this bench. I can move your shit. So I move this guy's shit over to the side. I, I didn't do it rudely. I just kind of, I, I, I moved it as gently as I could, slowly across the bench. So I move it across, sit down on the bench, and then the stuff is still there. But it's closer to me than the other person. And then this other person comes down, this, this woman comes down onto the train station and she wants to sit on the bench as well. And she looks at the stuff and then she gives me dirty eyes. Like, move your shit. And I look at her, I'm like, it's not my shit. I didn't fucking put it here, but it looks like it's mine. So she's really fucking shitty at me for manspreading with stuff that isn't even mine. And she looks at the bench, and then she really rudely, like even more alpha than me, I pussied out, I moved that shit politely, but she looks at me, she sees the stuff, and she remembers all those fucking BuzzFeed articles of stand up, make space for yourself, women deserve the space, end man spreading, and she, like a fucking rude asshole, sits down where the stuff is, and pushes it into me. Like, it wasn't touching me, and then she pushes it into me. Like, and then she looks at me like, yeah, move your shit. I'm, I'm taking up space. BuzzFeed. Fucking making a YouTube video about this. Exploiting feminism for cash. And I look at her like, what the fuck? It's not my stuff. And then I look at the guy who's sitting... So she's in the middle of me, and then there's the stuff, which is now basically on my lap. Then there's the woman. And then to the left of her is the guy whose stuff it actually is. She's given me dirty eyes. I lean over her and I look at him I'm like, hey, man, come and get your stuff. And then he looks at me and he goes, oh, that's not, that's not my bag. And I'm like, who's fucking... whose fucking bag is it? And then me and this woman make eye contact with each other like, oh, no. Either this is lost property, or this is a fucking nail bomb. 
And uh, I look at the bag and I'm like, yeah, that's a nail bomb. So I get up and I walk, <laughs> I walk like 200 meters away. I'm like, I am not waiting for fucking the peak hour train to roll up and for the projectiles to start ex- going everywhere. All right. I got shit to do today. I don't need to be torn apart by some fucking psycho with their shitty homemade bomb bag. So I get up and I walk away and that woman, she just stands, sits next to it. And I'm not going to save her life. I'm like, I don't know, fucking your funeral woman. You push that shit into me. You can cop the nails. I don't care. So I'm, I'm standing 300 meters away and I feel like, um, you ever see those, those like bomb squads, you know, them where they, where they're in like the bomb proof shelter and they're watching the nukes go off through uh, bulletproof glass. Well, it's probably more than bulletproof, isn't it? It's probably nuke-proof glass. I don't think you can survive a nuke between fucking bulletproof glass. But you know what I mean, right? I feel like that guy standing in the glass box watching what this bomb is going to do to the environment that it's in. And uh, then the train pulls up, right? And the station is packed. So I'm just waiting for this terrorist attack to happen. I'm like, fuck, it's going to happen. Um, and... Uh, then the train pulls up, right? And and then there's this old woman that is not standing anywhere near the bench. She's standing up. She's been standing up the whole time, nowhere near the bench. The train pulls up and then she turns around. She goes and grabs the bag and the book, puts it on her back and gets on the train. And I look at this bitch and I'm like, you're a fucking asshole. You weren't even sitting next to your shit. You just put your shit down on the fucking bench so that nobody else could sit there. You made some other woman go all fucking BuzzFeed on me and throw your shit at me. Then I think it's a nail bomb, so I run away, leaving innocent people to die. And then you just turn around and pick it up like it's no big deal. Like you didn't just do that to everyone around you, you inconsiderate fucking cunt. It just really shit me. And then this tra- the train pulls up. This is what I was originally yelling out. The train pulls out, and it's like peak hour. So it's fucking packed. There's no seats anywhere. I look at the time, and I'm like, you know, if I miss this train, I'm going to be late to the radio show. And I looked at everyone standing, and I was like, you know what? I am just better than that. I am... Well, I'm not better than, than catching public transport, but I, I treat myself better than someone who just gets on the train and stands rubbing shoulders with dirty, sweaty strangers who also hate you for touching them just so they can get there on time to please a boss who doesn't even fucking like them, okay? My boss likes me. I love working here. Just saying. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, you know, I'm not the kind of cunt that gets on a fucking train and hates their life. So I'm like, I skipped it. I missed the train on purpose, and then I got on the next one, and it was empty seats galore. So I highly recommend that, guys. If you guys are at the train station, you're you, it's the last train. If you don't get this train, and you're gonna be you're gonna it's gonna make you late, just skip it. Who gives a fuck? Skip that shit. You don't want to be standing up for forty minutes. Fuck that. This isn't like uh, you're not like lining up. You know what always reminded me of that when I worked in a job that I hated and I had a really depressing view about public transport. Like now I like taking it because it takes me to a fun job. But when I when I was hating my life and I hated my job, I always looked at the train as um, you know, like the you know how they build abattoirs and they start herding sheep into the abattoir and and all of the sheep are just walking along, being like, I fucking hate where I am, but the only way to go is forwards. I wonder what's at the end of this tunnel, and it's just death. I always I always viewed public transport as that, like a whole bunch of fucking sad, confused people with no control over their life going into this mystery tunnel and then coming out the other side being like, fuck, that's the end of my life. This sucks. That took a really depressing turn there, didn't it? Shit. <laughs> um... Oh, man. What else did I want to talk about today? All right, I'm back. So, uh, sorry about the, that, guys. I just want to get this news article up that I read. Um, man, I... <laughs> I was, you know what? I'm just going to read you the headline, okay? The, you know, This is where every single woman listening to this podcast should start feeling very fucking nervous when I read this headline. And you know what? I'm going to read it, and you guys are going to think, oh, it's no big deal doesn't really matter, you know, I, 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 I'm not scared, I'm not worried by this, but I think this, is, this, this should scare the shit out of you, okay, this is the headline, 
I have sex with a doll four times a week and I'm saving for a sex robot. But my wife doesn't mind. Okay? So whoever this guy's wife is, is really fucking up here in terms of protecting the... uh, ensuring the survival of the female gender because she should not stand for this shit. She should really be competing with this fucking doll because the moment this cunt gets a robot, she is out of here, all right? I'll read read you this um, article. Where are we? Okay, so... James is a 58-year-old engineer who has been married for 36 years and has a, and has a sex life which would be the envy of many men a fraction of his age. And let me say, guys, when you hear this his headline, like you think, oh yeah, fat, ugly loser, never fucked a girl in his life, can only fuck a robot. No, this is a guy who's 56 years old. He has a wife, and looking at the guy for a 56-year-old dude, he's actually pretty good looking. So this. This is why, women, I was saying you need to be scared because first it starts first off with, you know, above average 56-year-old men and their wives who, you know, don't put out anymore, they don't have sex with them anymore, and they don't care if they get a doll. And then it moves down to, like, people in, uh, you know, 40-year-old people and their wife, you know, might nag them a little bit too much. Uh, is unsatisfied with their lives, so they throw all their stress on their husband, so he buys a, you know, $8,000 sex robot, never speaks to his wife again, and then it moves down into guys like me, people in the prime of their life, right? The technology is advanced, maybe we're 50 years in the future, the technology has advanced, but women haven't stopped fucking nagging men, or annoying them, or, or doing all their emotional stuff, and that's when the technology, the, it's it's like a... It's like uh, uh, the planets are lining. So the moment the technology gets good enough where it's almost like a woman and then when the moment where every man on the planet decides they've had enough of women's shit, like those two vectors converge and when they hit that point and women still haven't fixed shit or started to fight back or work to make these robots illegal, really, you don't have to change anything. You can't change who you are. You don't have to change your behavior. You should just make these robots illegal before we perfect the technology to the point where where you're like almost equals. Except, even if the robots aren't as good as the sex stuff and the conversating stuff, there'll be just a no arguments mode. And that will tip every guy on the planet over the edge and women will just, we just won't talk to you anymore. It's already happening in Japan. The porn over there is so fucking good and the culture over there is so fucked up and the women there are so entitled that men have just started, ah, well, fuck it, I just won't talk to girls ever. I got my hentai, I got my fucking little dick sleeve. You know, what's it called? Pocket pussy? What do I need girls for? I don't need to talk to them. And then that's it. You know? You women need to fucking start fighting this shit with legislation. You need to make sex robots illegal because the moment the technology advances to equal you in the bedroom, you're fucked. Okay, so let me read this article. Picture this this husband and his wife on a grand scale, okay? Because, you know, everybody thought the internet was weird. You know, everyone thought no one's going to use this internet thing. Who's going to use that shit? Started out as military technology developed by geeks. Oh, no one's going to use that. Everyone looked at Tinder and was like, oh, that's just a a fad that young people use to pick up on. And, you know, everyone's still going to date. Nah, dating has been replaced with Tinder. This shit's going to replace women altogether. Picture this guy's relationship as the human race and it's going to fucking terrify you, okay? So the guy is all men and then the wife is all women and then in the middle of them is the fucking turning point of humanity, this sex doll, okay? James is a 58-year-old engineer who has been married for 36 years, and he has a sex life which would be the envy of many men a fraction of his age. He also has a very understanding wife. He shouldn't. She should hate this. Four times a week, he slips between the sheets for sex sessions with blonde April, who looks like she is only just out of her teens. But April is not his wife, and she is not an extramarital affair. Yes, 
She is. She is an extramarital affair. It's just the technology isn't good enough for his wife to get jealous yet, okay? Because this is just a $2,000 sex doll. You wait until he... In the rest of this article, I'll read this. Uh, he's saving up for an $8,000 robotic sex doll called Harmony who can smile talk back to him and who will be responsive during sex. So, the only reason that his wife is not jealous of this doll is because it can't talk to him and it can't respond. But you fucking wait. The moment that the technology gets... This is what I'm saying. You know, no one's worried about sex dolls at the moment, but the, but the very minute that the technology gets good enough to almost equal women, real-life women... It's fucking over, okay? She's going to get, as soon as, as soon as he walks in, <laughs> as soon as this cunt walks in with his fucking giant robot box and he, he takes his $2,000 sex doll and he puts it on the couch in the family room that they don't go into anymore because they don't have kids, all their kids have moved out. The moment that shit happens and he unboxes his new sex robot, he plugs it in the wall, charges it up and turns it on and he goes, Hi Harmony, how are you? And she doesn't say, Well, I would be good if you would vacuum once in a while. The moment she doesn't say that, it's fucking awesome over his wife is replaced it's done okay so let's keep reading this shit this woman man you women listen to this podcast need to learn from this chick she has fucked up and has basically enabled herself to be replaced by her husband with a fucking robot okay his wife, Tina, says she struggled at first with another woman, in brackets, coming into James's life while she was caring for her sick mother, but has now grown accustomed to them sharing his bed. So, already, fucking already, this poor bitch, she, she leaves the house for three months to look after her mum, who was probably dying, and she didn't come home every two weeks to give her husband a blowjob, so he's like, fuck it, I'm buying a sex doll. And then she fucked up, she didn't put up a fight. She should have said, there is no fucking way you are buying a sex doll, whatever this guy's name is, James? No, I'm not letting you have a sex doll in her house. The moment, that was a test, right? He walked up to her and he went, hey, honey, um, you know how you're caring for your mum? She's like, yeah, I'm, I know it sucks. We don't see each other very often. He goes, yeah, well, you know, I am a man and I have my needs. She's like, yes, I'm, I'm not in the mood right now. Mum's fucking dying of AIDS in the other room, okay? I can hear her coughing her lungs up and shitting the bed. I don't know. It doesn't turn me on. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Also, I finished menopause. There's, no, there's nothing going on. It doesn't work anymore. There's nothing happening here. I'm sorry. And he goes, well, I know that, but uh, I was thinking, uh, why don't I buy a sex doll? That was the test, okay? That was the, the moment where he, was, where he had in his mind, I could replace this bitch. I could replace her, and then, I'll, then, she, then she, if she lets me buy this fucking doll... I'm going balls deep in this technology, and she is gone. And then she was like, yeah, buy the doll. How much is it? Two grand? Yeah, we can afford that. Just get the doll. You can fuck it. I don't care. All right? Just leave me alone. Mum shit the bed. I'm trying to fucking wipe the shit out of her asshole without pushing it into her old pussy and then giving her like a fucking vag infection. Okay? That's what I'm preoccupied with. You go and fuck your doll. I've got better shit to do. All right? That's where she gave up. She was like, I've got bigger problems over here. I'll let my man fuck a doll. I don't care. That's where she fucked up. And now she is gradually being replaced with better technology. I realize I am comparing women to technology, but, you know, it is technology. Like our brains, it's a fucking computer, okay? And pretty soon, you know, 200 years down the track, we're going to make 
computers that are smarter than our brains and and they're going to kill us all and that'll be fucking it but between that moment and now there's a good space in time where robots won't be quite as smart as us but they will be almost as smart as an actual woman so no one will fuck around with the dating process or the wooing process or trying to keep chicks satisfied they'll just go down to fucking Amazon and download Alexa 3.0 threesome edition with fucking big tits and and a detachable you know dick if you're into that you can just screw on a dick and be like, oh, I wonder what it's like. It's not gay if it's a trap. Like, that's what people are going to do, okay? And women need to make this shit illegal ASAP. Because he's, because he, look, I'm not, here's the thing. I know that this sounds incredibly sexist, saying that women are going to be replaced by robots. But the only reason I say that is because women are not developing the technology for themselves. Do you know what I mean? Like, like men are working there. Okay. It started off the opposite way. So men worked really hard to design vibrators just so we could be like, shut, just so we could shut up the, I'm sorry. I can't make you come. I don't know how it works. It's really fucking difficult. I know. I do try, but it's like a fucking, have you ever played like, uh, Cluedo while wearing a blindfold? That's exactly what this shit is like. It's fucking hard, okay? And if we're having sex once a week, I don't know. I just can't play Scrabble while I'm dyslexic on your pussy. It's so difficult every time we have sex. So instead of having that argument every time we had sex with women, 200 years ago, men invented the vibrator and was like, here, here you go. Fucking sort it out yourself. There you go. I invented it. Stop nagging me. That's, and then that was, and then men, we got replaced for a little bit there. We were like, whoa, whoa, like we saw it coming, okay? We started vibrate, we started designing vibrator technology and it got fucking awesome. Have you ever, have you ever been to a sex uh, shop and like gone to the $300 vibrator section and like they have like tester models where obviously you can't test it and shove it in your pussy. Like you can't do that, but you can turn it on and touch it with your finger and, and you feel the vibration and then you hope to God that no one's put that in their fucking pussy before you walked in while the staff weren't looking. If you have ever felt one of those things, you'll be like, dude, I, ca- I can't compete with that. Dude, that thing's bigger than me and it vibrates. Like, oh, what the fuck am I going to do in competing with that? So I think that men, we made vibrators so good and then we saw what was going on. I'm like, hang on a second. Why the fuck are we replacing ourselves? Why would we do that? So we just stopped, okay? Vibrators have gotten... The the vibrations have gotten stronger, but they haven't turned into like a full man. You know what I mean? Like, Like we stopped at the dildo and that vibrates. That's where we stopped. But then... So women got the head start on the sex toy technology developing side so you guys got vibrators and then we perfected vibrators and then we stopped this is the point women where you need to make us stop with the sex dolls because we're getting fucking good at it and the moment that that sex doll can walk around and talk to you without ever having a negative interaction you're done. I'm sorry. And it, and, and it sounds sexist, but if you really think about it, if you could buy a fucking man robot that would come to your house and fuck the shit out of you with an 8-inch vibrating dick and it would treat you exactly the way you wanted to be treated, you could do your mind games, right? You could say, I'm fine, but you don't, you're not actually fine, and then the robot would detect that even though you said you're fine, you're actually not fine. And then the robot, instead of like, like what I would do, if you were like, I'm fine, I would go, oh, oh, great then. Okay, cool. Well, you know, good night. And I hang up the phone. And then you'd be like, oh my God, he doesn't understand that I'm not fine. This is fucking men. They don't get it, right? If instead of that, the robot goes, I can tell that you're not fine. What's going on? Was it because I forgot this event? Actually, it wouldn't even forget a fucking anniversary, would it? 
And he'd be like, I can tell you're not fine. Is it because your friend Stacy said this to Stephanie and that reflected on your life in this way? And then you go, oh my God, he remembered. And then it goes, of course I remembered. I got fucking 100 terabytes of memory in my fucking brain and it's all attuned to your emotional state. So, like, we would be over. We'd be fucking done. So you need to stop this shit before we replace you. Because we started off with pocket pussies. And I have never used a pocket pussy. Because I look at that shit and I'm like, no way. No way am I fucking something that I then have to put in the dishwasher and rinse out. Yuck. Fuck that. But I'm looking at these, these sex dolls and I'm like, man, that's almost there. You know, it's almost fucking there. I couldn't fuck anything that can't walk. That's 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 the line, okay? Even this eight thousand dollar sex robot that this guy's talking about, it can it can talk, it can respond to you, it can uh, uh, move during sex. I'm looking at that and I'm like, you know what? Almost there. The moment that thing can get up and walk around the house and just a- at least look like it's doing something, like I'm not expecting it to like, you know, fucking clean the house after I fucked it for the eighth time that week. I don't want things, uh, I don't want a fucking, and a cleaning machine. I just want something that at least looks like it's human. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you might have, have sex with it for six hours and do the most horrible things you can conceive of. And then when you're exhausted, walking around the house, fucking dehydrated, it is like get up, put its clothes on and then pretend and read a book. But it's not actually reading a book. It's just going through the motions of looking at a book for the correct amount of time and then turning the page. I'd buy that robot. That's realistic enough. Once it hits that point in technology, I'll be like, yeah, I don't need a girlfriend. <laughs> so women, you got to stop this shit, okay? Let me read the rest of this article. Yeah, like I, I read this whole thing and I was like, this is the human race, like broken down in, into one marriage. This is like the, whim, the female team and the male team and, and, the, and the, the female team is just fucking it up for themselves and, and, just, and just letting themselves be replaced. Like, how does this woman not see this happening? Um, yeah, so his wife, Tina, says she struggled at first with the other woman coming into James's life while she was caring for a sick mum, but has now grown accustomed to them sharing his bed. So already... He's brought the fucking doll in, and it's not enough for him to fuck the doll. He also wants to sleep in it, and then he's in the middle, and then she's still in the bed. So she hasn't been replaced, but, you know, she's being, like, shoved to the side of the bed. Then it goes, um, here's where she fucked up. She goes, if he really wanted to, he could have gone out and found someone else, but he didn't, he didn't do that. He was true to me. No, idiot! He's trying to replace you. The technology just isn't there yet. James said, Every guy has in his head the perfect girl, and this is what I see when I look in the mirror and see this look. What? I don't understand that fucking sentence. Blah, blah, blah. When I take out April, it's usually to... Oh, what the fuck? This guy leaves the house with his sex doll and not his wife? Dude, what is his wife doing? She's really dropping the ball on this one. She's letting the whole fucking team down. Because you know this guy is telling all of his married friends how fucking awesome it is to have a robo-sex doll that you can take out on dates and it doesn't end with an argument and then you can go home and fuck it seven times in a row if you have the stamina and enough Viagra. You know he's telling all of his mates that and then his mates are thinking, shit, Well, James's wife is all right with it. Maybe I can fucking replace mine. When I take April, that's the robot, the sex doll. When I take April out, it's usually to a hamburger place where we can stop and get a bite to eat. Why does he say we, like this robot can fucking eat? The only thing this thing is eating is his, like, dick. A lot of people don't even notice that she's not a breathing person. Dude, don't. What a fucking moron. This guy's delusional. A lot of people don't even notice that she's not a... Really? Nobody notices when you walk into the local hamburger joint with your fucking robo doll over your shoulder, dripping your cum down its leg, and then you place it into the fucking booth and then rearrange its hair and twist its head so it's kind of making eye contact with you, and then the waitress comes over and you order one burger? You really think that nobody's noticed that shit?
We usually have sex two to three, sometimes four nights a week routinely. It's amazingly like having sex with a real woman. You see, his wife's fucked up. The biggest difference is whatever position you want them in, you have to put them in as they will not get there on their own. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm fucking saying. That's the only difference. The moment that robot can get up and walk around and put itself into that sex position, the female gender is over. You guys need to stop that shit like we did. We stopped at insanely good vibrators and butt plugs. What We didn't start developing bodies for them, all right? You don't want... Because we realized, oh shit, the moment that this dildo can pull her hair and 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 spank her and and say you like it when daddy does that the moment that vibrator can do that to a woman there is no reason for men to exist at all i want to see what his wife says about getting a new one um oh okay he, this is james again see this this wife his wife's fucked up because if he's openly admitting this shit, he doesn't give a fuck about his wife anymore. Most doll owners, although they do go in, although they do go into with, uh, most doll owners, this article is written really weird. They're leaving words out. It's not me. Most doll owners, although they go into it with the doll as a sex toy, they find that they do develop a relationship with it. If I had to choose between April and my wife, I honestly don't know what I would do. Dude, what is his wife? She's given up. She did, she's just... She's like that fucking marathon runner that's coming seventh. And he's like, I'm not even going to jog the rest of it. I'm just going to walk the rest of it. I've given up. I'm losing this battle, so fuck it. And he's like, well, look, I don't know if someone made me choose between my wife of 36 years... Or my inanimate $2,000 sex doll of six months. I don't know. That's a hard choice. Um, where are we? Up until now, James has had to l- rely on his imagination when he talks to his dolls and interacts with them. But that could be about to change. In San Marcos, California, Matt McCullen... See, women, Matt McCullen, number one target. This is the guy who's working to replace you as hard as he can. This dude, he should be on your fucking hit list. Matt McCullen of The Real Doll Company uh, have been racing to create robosexuals, dolls with artificial intelligence and more interactive sexual functions. So that means that the doll will, like, stick a finger in your ass (laughs) while it gives you a blowjob. And the moment... The fucking moment that James's sex doll can move its index finger and stick like a knuckle in his asshole, it's over for the female race. <laughs> oh man, I'm only halfway through this article. I'm going to leave it there, guys, because I think that's enough. Yeah, look, I'm just looking at this shit and it's, and it's just like... It sounds sexist because I'm only focusing on women, but that's only because that the only people that are building sex robots, they're only building women. Um, because I think that the men understand, like subconsciously somewhere in their brain, dude, if I can build a robot that can fuck the shit out of a woman and she won't feel self-conscious or like a whore because it's a, it's an object, like no one... Like, if a, if a girl went out and fucked, like, hey, man, Hi. I'm talking, no, come in, I'm talking about sex robots, dude. Okay. Oh, this is, Luke Kidgel's on the podcast, you can't hear because he's not close to the microphone. Dude, I'm, I'm talking about how women need to stop this female sex robot shit because they're being replaced. The moment that, what I was saying is, oh, a girl, right, will never feel like a whore for fucking herself with a vibrator like a hundred times in three months, right? Mm. But if she fucks a hundred guys, she'll feel like a whore. So she's not going to do that. But if she fucks a male sex robot that can like pull her hair and spank her a hundred times, she won't feel like a whore. Uh, yeah, she would. No, she wouldn't. 
But if you, if there was a robot spanking your hair and you're pressed up against the wall getting fucked like 10 times a day, you wouldn't feel like a whore. <laughs> no, she wouldn't because it's like just like a dildo. The only difference is because the because the robot is not sexist, right? The moment that a robot can like pull a girl by the hair, we're over. We're done. We're replaced. Why that why would a woman spend time on a guy who will forget her birthday? When she can go and hang out with a sex robot with an eight-inch vibrating cock that'll just that'll also do the dishes. Yeah, you're right. We're fucked. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah, but you'd still feel like a whore. No, you wouldn't. That's what I'm saying. So, but we're not developing those robots. Men are not working to replace themselves. Men are working real hard on female sex dolls. So I'm saying to women, you guys need to stop this shit before you get replaced. Because we stopped at really good vibrators. Like we made. The best vibrator ever, and then we were like, "Fuck, this is getting too good. We got to stop this technology before we get replaced." And we also made that because you know that's there's benefits in those for us as well. You can get things started with that, and then come in, swoop in with your dick. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, what I mean. Life, human dick, but yeah, as that, soon you as get things started. But as soon yeah. as that dildo can pull her hair, it's work? over. How come we don't have robots that can jack us off? That's bullshit. It is bullshit. That's, that sucks. <laughs> oh, Alright um, Can we pause? I'm so yeah, sorry Yeah, no, that's fine I'm, I'm gonna come back And I gotta do an ad read anyway So I was gonna pause Alright, I'll be back in a sec I'm sorry for yelling about Dude, I did 26 minutes On these fucking sex robots <laughs> Alright, I'm back Sorry about that, guys um, We're just editing Fucking videos With this spray tan bullshit Alright, so I had to watch it Because I think Luke gets his ass out In the video We were worried about Oh, we're gonna get five for that But fuck it We're putting it in the video Alright, so Um what do I need to do? Oh, yeah, I need to do the uh, Dollar Shave Club ad read because uh, I've done it. Th this is the third time with it, so this is the last ad read. So hopefully they liked what I've done for them and they'll be back on the podcast. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about this first. Yes, the podcast is now on Spotify. So a lot of Android users don't know how to use download the podcast unless it's on fucking YouTube because, you know, obviously you can't use iTunes and it's not on. There's, the, the Android just sucks for podcasts, basically. Um, so Spotify reached out to me. Well, yeah, I, I, I applied to be on Spotify because they don't just take any podcast. They do have to clear it for some reason. They have a quality control thing and for some reason I made it through. There's like, there's hardly any Australian podcast on Spotify and uh, thankfully, they let us on uh, on Spotify. And now, if you have Spotify, you can listen to my podcast uh, through there. Now, a lot of people have been asking, oh, awesome, because you're on Spotify, does that mean that you make money now? Because obviously, Spotify is a pl paid platform. They play ads. So they'll be making money out of my podcast by having it on their platform. And I would like to say that uh, no. I won't be making any fucking money at all because uh, Spotify have been uh, very welcoming to podcasts, very happy to have podcasts on their platform, absolutely wrapped to make money out of podcasts, but they have decided to exclude us. There are currently zero podcasts on Spotify that make any kind of money from being on there. And... Uh, I think that that is the biggest fucking rip-off in the world, and it's just them taking advantage of fucking independent creators because podcasts and comedy and, and that kind of weird realm in general is not unionized like the music industry is. Like, we don't have late record labels that will say, hey, if you don't pay our artists more, we won't let you have Beyonce, Jay-Z, Kanye, or any of the three million mega artists that we've had in our fucking time on your platform. So pay us more. And then Spotify have to go, all right. So dude, even if like Joe Rogan was like, hey, I'm not going on Spotify till you pay me. Spotify would be like, yeah, all right, cool. What will we lose? $100,000 a month? We don't give a fuck. Go for it. We don't care. It's because the podcasts are not unionized and we don't band together that we just allow ourselves to get fucked. So to all of the people who are asking if they should switch to listen to Spotify so I make money, I make no money out of Spotify. It's a fucking ripoff. But as usual, 
Uh, it's just another thing that you have to do to get exposure. So hopefully Dollar Shave Club come back on the podcast, if uh, so, which is why I'm trying to do a good job with these ad reads. And uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe, uh, you know, if they come back, then I can start fucking around and making these a little bit more fun. But just for the first three weeks of podcast ads, I'm trying to get it spot on so that they do come back. I hope you understand. Right. Let's get into it. <clears throat> Guys, I've got the answer to finally make your life so much easier. Since joining the Dollar Shave Club, since joining dollarshaveclub.com, I don't need to choose between price and quality to get an amazing shave anymore. Dollarshaveclub.com is a no-brainer. You got no brain, doesn't matter. You won't have any beard either. It's a no-brainer for an incredible shave delivered right to your door. DollarShaveClub.com delivers high quality, that was underlined, raises to my home for less than what I used to pay. Uh, I used to pay an amount of money, can't remember how much, and Dollar Shave Club sent them to me for free. But you know what? I don't think they're sending me any more free raises, and no shit, I'm going to sign up and I'm going to use my own fucking referral link like a loser. All right, it's uh, they send raises to my home for less than what I used to pay. There is no reason to deal with the hassle of going to the store to buy expensive razors when you join the club. Just go to dollarshaveclub.com and pick a razor that works for you from their lineup of amazing blades. That's all there is to it. I get a first class shave with my executive razor, that was underlined, and when I use it with their Dr. Carver's shave butter, the blade just gently glides for the most for the smoothest shave imaginable. Oh my lord, I can't even I'm trying so hard to imagine the best shave ever, but I can't because I've used Dr. Carver's shave butter. Here is your chance to see why over 3 million members like me love Dollar Shave Club. Right now, you can get your first month of the Shave Club for as little as $5. After that, it's just a few bucks a month. Dollar Shave Club is so confident in the quality and value of all their products... There is no long-term commitment or any hidden fees. There is no reason not to join. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead. That is dollarshave.com slash spearhead. All right? If you're going to sh- sign up to the Dollar Shave Club, it'd be awesome if you did it in the next couple of days or the next week or so, just so that, I don't know, I'm assuming that they track everybody who uses that link, and then they'll be like, oh, cool, our ads are working. We'll, we'll go with Lewis again. So that'd be cool. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to get. I'm gonna type in and I keep forgetting to do it. Dollar Shave Club dot com slash spear head enter um does that work oh i put it into google that's why it didn't work idiot dollar shave club dot com slash spear yeah all right sick that worked all right i'm gonna do that after the podcast i'm gonna sign up okay so yeah do that if you uh want to help me out okay now, I don't know how long I've been going for. I think I yelled about sex robots for about half an hour, and then I did 20 minutes before that. So I'm going to do one uh, miscellaneous bit at the end question, and then I will leave it there. Okay. Let me get my fucking emails up here. I think I found a good one. I got emailed one this morning that I thought was a goodie. Um... All right, here we go. Hooking up with a girl you are seeing's best friend. So, a girl that you're already dating, you want to fuck her best friend. Okay. Uh, Hey, Lewis, congrats on the special. Can't wait to see it. My name is Vasilios. So, as I write this, just be aware that I'm half pissed. So, if I write like a dumb cunt, I'm sorry. You are forgiven. So, anyway, a few weeks ago, I started seeing this girl from tinder let's call her tony and we went out a few times and then one time she invited me to a big lunch with all of her friends about 10 people i can't really remember but anyway that's him being pissed ah fucking 10 cunts i don't know anyway after that some people left and we were all hanging out and as the group died down it was just me and one of her guy friends and her best friend let's call her jenny so you started dating tony and now Tony has left, and you're hanging out with Jenny and some guy. So as the day went and the night started, we all decided to get pissed. 
We all went and got a bottle of vodka and had a piss up in the park. What are you, 12? Bef- before when we had a piss up in the park before when I was with a big group. Before, when I was with a big group, I was quiet and shy because I was trying to suss shit out. But once it was small and I was pissed, I opened up to my true self and started ripping shit into Jenny and we got smashed. Long story short, we all did this for a few weeks. Then one week, the guy and Tony did not come and it was just me and Jenny. One thing led to another. So Tony is the person you were initially dating. Now you're alone with her friend. One thing led to another, and she sucked my dick in the park. Fucking, I bet this cunt is from like Adelaide or Perth or someplace like that. Uh, She sucked my dick in the park. Uh, But a week before that, I started losing interest in Tony. But after it happened, I hung out with Jenny again, and we ended up going back to her place and hooked up. We were making out on the lounge. I had her shirt off and her tits out, and when I suggested to go to her room, she said she was on a period. But after that, I'm after that I'm sort of feeling guilty about dogging Tony with her best friend. What do you reckon I should do? Should I tell Tony or just continue with Jenny and see how it goes? Cheers, cunt. Thanks for reading this story. It's a long one, but yeah, have a shit one. Thanks, mate. Um, look... You're, I don't think that, I don't think you've exactly dogged Tony. Like, what you've done is kind of rude, because you started dating a girl, and then you fucked her friend. Really, the, the, the villain in this story is uh, Jenny. Like, Tony has just introduced this nice boy that she started to date and really likes, and Jenny's like, you know what I'm going to do? Suck his dick in a park. Like, Jenny really is the bad person in this situation. Um, but yeah, man, what you should do is just be honest. I mean, you, this girl is not, neither of these girls are your girlfriend. So just tell Tony, Hey, um, I'm, st- I've started hooking up with your friend. I'm sorry. Um, but I just really like her. If you like, we can continue what we're doing, but maybe it's not the best idea to see for everyone to hang out at once. Cause it might get awkward. And then, you know, that leaves you, leaves her open to be like, well, Hey, we could all hang out together and have a threesome. So yeah, man, I wouldn't stress too much unless this girl is a psycho. You have an exact... I mean, it's 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 inconsiderate, but it's not like fucking evil. You're not dating either of these girls. So yeah, I would just I would just tell her and be honest and say, hey, to, to save your feelings, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, I've really enjoyed dating you, but me and your friend now have a thing going. I'm, ha- I'm, ha- I'm happy single, um, so I would like to continue seeing you. Um, but just so you know, I'm also seeing your friend and leave it up to her. She can say, oh, I'm not into that. Fuck you. You're an asshole. And then you can stay with, you know, Jenny or she'll be like, oh, well, I guess I will keep seeing you. And then you can see them both separately or, sh- or they'll both be like, you know what? Let's all hang out together. And then you're fucking living the dream, man. All right. So yeah, don't stress too much. That's what I would do. And, um, that brings us to the end of the podcast. Oh, this is what I wanted to say. I'm going to post in the Facebook group on Sunday afternoon a poll. I have decided what I'm going to do for episode 100. I'm going to do a live podcast. The date has not been announced. It'll be sometime next year for episode 100. And I don't know where I'm going to do it. I am not going... I'm definitely not going to do it in Melbourne because Melbourne had episode 50 and I've done so many shows in Melbourne this year that I want to take it to another state. But I don't know which state has the most podcast listeners because I can't really tell from the analytics. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a poll in the group and I'm going to do all of the major cities in Australia, so except for Melbourne. So it's going to be out of Sydney, Adelaide, Perth, uh, Tasmania. So yeah, Sydney, Adelaide, Perth, and Tasmania. And Brisbane. I knew I was forgetting one. Sydney, Perth, Adelaide, Brisbane, Tassie. I'm putting those five cities in the podcast group. If you are from that city, uh, choose whichever one you're from and vote for it. And whichever one has the most votes, I will go to and I'll put on a show. And that's where we'll do episode 100. All right? So, keep an eye out on Sunday for the post. It'll be Sunday afternoon around. And, uh, yeah, guys, 
Thank you very much for listening. Give me a rating on iTunes. Subscribe on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up. All that kind of shit. And consider supporting me on Patreon because Lord knows I'm not getting paid for this fucking Spotify shit. All it means is I get more downloads so it costs me more money and they make more money. But once again, the independent comic gets fucked. So yeah, anyway, don't let that uh, dishearten you. I still love doing this shit. I will talk to you next Sunday. Have a fucking shit one.